Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Swisspreneur. I'm here in Langenthal meeting with Peter Schuppach. Peter Schuppach is the founder of Miracle. But I will also talk to him about StudiVZ and why they sold not to Facebook but Holtspring and also how he built fashion friends out here of Langenthal. Let's go and chat with him. Hi Peter. Hi Chris. <laughs> Such an honor to uh, be here at the warehouse. We are in Langenthal at the warehouse, which has a history. Um, it has been um, a steel um, trading company here, Gecko, and now it is something completely new. So disruption has taken place in this building. Can you Definitely. tell us something about it? <laughs> Definitely, yeah. It's a, it's a very cool place, actually. It's a, it's a storage building uh, for logistics, basically. And uh, on the top we have, on the rooftop, we have like a penthouse uh, office. And it's, it's a very nice place, actually, right now for, for software e-commerce companies. Um, in the back, uh, uh, many years ago, 20 years ago, uh, it used to be a, a, a trader of, of, of parts, of metal parts. And there were hundreds of thousands of, of parts here. And it was all kept uh, in, a, in our accounting system on paper. So okay. we, we still sometimes we find old paper with a, a manual inventory management. And um, I think it shows how, how time changed and technology changed. But they went out of business 2001? Yes. And yeah. then you guys moved in and now this place we are here, it's actually the storage, like we have uh, equipment here you're selling. Yeah. What takes place in this, in this room here? It's uh, the headquarter of Swiss Commerce. Uh, Swiss Commerce is, uh, is a company that I founded together with uh, um, my wife Esther and, and Friederike von Waldenfels um, uh, three years ago. And uh, we build, we build um, niche or uh, special interest uh, online shops. And uh, this here is now the storage room in Langenthal. We have another um, logistic place in, in Dietlikon near Zurich. Um, and he, from here we fulfill all the orders uh, that are taken by, by the online shops. So if I order something on fission.ch, yes. I get my stuff from here. Yes, you see in back, back here. here. Um, some um, uh, fishing goods uh, out of fishing.ch and yeah. uh, we, we fulfill all the parcel and pack the parcel and, and do the inventory here. Yeah. Right. Let's, let's get back to that later on. Um, I really like to take you at the early um, years of your life. Yeah. So you uh, did an apprenticeship in banking and then you went on and were in the US for a bit, trading, stuff like that. But then you decided to come back and study economics at the University of Applied Science. Why did you not go for a banking career? Uh, I was uh, one year in, in, uh, in Zurich uh, at UBS and uh, it showed me a, a world where I had to be kind of like in a, in a box. I, I couldn't decide uh, really on, on, on what I wanted to do. I, I just did things. I was part of a process and, and that's, that was it basically. So I think uh, already very early I, I, I thought that I I, I, I wanted to do something for myself and, and that's why I then started the, the school because I wanted to learn more about economics and, and the world of economics. Uh, that's why I started that. And so you already had the idea to be an entrepreneurship. You need some tools and something that you actually can, can then be a good entrepreneur. No, I think it was not really a plan. Oh, okay. You know, I started uh, early in, in, in school uh, at, at 14, 15. I imported um, uh, at that time vinyl, um, um, uh, how do you say, vinyl discs, yeah. um, oh, okay. music discs yeah. uh, mm -hmm. from Germany and sold them in school. Uh, so uh, <laughs> then we started a, a, a disco, uh, so kind of, um, I was always doing things, had projects. Um, uh, I somehow felt that I wanted to do my, my own thing. Okay. But I never had really the plan, oh, you go to, to school and then you study and then you do that. So it was more the instinct that, that I should learn more about economics and then maybe later on would do something else. Yeah. 
So you were an early trader with 14, 15. <laughs> I was an early was, trader. Was in your and DNA. I wrote on my typing machine. Yeah. I wrote the price list. Oh, and, okay. and, and, and I, 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 uh, I always had to, to laugh. We just made some, uh, some images from photographs from uh, the old days of, of one of our companies uh, 70 years ago when they started the catalog business. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I thought back when I wrote, wrote my, my price own list. price list with the tag, you could enter your name and you could just uh, cross what, what kind of LPs you would like to buy. Yeah. So you went on to the University of Applied Science, but then something happened and you dropped out, like Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, <laughs> School dropout. <laughs> what happened at that point? Why did you drop out of school? Yeah, um, colleagues of mine, or actually colleagues of, of my brother, um, they wanted to start a, their own business. Uh, they were also in, 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 in their studies, but they, they, they had the plan to start their own business uh, in computers. And um, they needed somebody who uh, had some idea about uh, yeah, economics, and, and uh, we then uh, started to, to write a business plan and a business case to, to get the first funding from a bank to start actually importing computers from Taiwan. And uh, I did that uh, at the side, uh, you know, uh, during the day I, I went to the, to the school and, and during night we built the company. And um, uh, that went on for about half a year and then we had a huge success by importing um, uh, a Taiwanese, first Taiwanese uh, computer and it uh, was a huge success because we, we uh, really were the price leader and uh, we sold it for at that time 4,999 Swiss francs mm -hmm. and this computer was really beating all the prices of all the IBMs and, and the others. Was that already the time when Roland Brock with Brock's.ch was around or? No, 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 no. no. He came later. Way earlier. It way was early. in the time when Steve Jobs started his uh, Apple thing. It was in, in the mid 80s. Mid 80s, okay. And it uh, was really very early. Um, uh, my colleagues went to Taiwan and they, they wanted to see how they are building the, the computers and how, how they would test the computer. And they mm -hmm. saw how you know, they, they took the, the, the motherboard and they had a plastic hammer and then they, <laughs> hit tested, on the, it. They tested it and <laughs> hit on, on this uh, motherboard. And, and if, if the, the computer still was running, it was okay. okay. So it was really, really early, early days of, of computer. It was DOS. Uh, the DOS time. Yeah, but how, how come did you then um, pivot to a software company? Like, did Miracle then start to evolve out of this company? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah you know, the, the original plan was always to, to actually to develop a software. But to finance <laughs> the development of the software, we had to sell hardware. Okay. And that's why uh, we saw, okay, we, there was a huge demand at that time for um, cost-effective uh, uh, PCs in the industry, mm -hmm. basically, and we saw that if if we hit that price point, that we could sell hundreds of PCs in the industry mainly, and um, that was the case, and, and that's how we actually built the company. That was your funding scenario. Yeah, like we had no, we no, had no external the only investors. funding. No, the only funding we had were, was a. Um, uh, was at the beginning our uh, student loans mm -hmm. that's well, how we started <laughs> and uh, we got then uh, uh, one bank loan at that time you could get a really uh, blanco um, loan without, without any security yeah so peter i have to ask this question i heard about this casino story in dijon yeah. and um, can you fill it, us in in this story like what happened and who came up with this crazy idea to beat the bank yeah, it's, uh, uh, it was actually before the bank loan. We, we had our student loans and uh, <laughs> we needed the money for importing the computers. So, and we had uh, Andreas Schomoki, he's a really uh, uh, terrific, uh, intelligent person and he's one of the smartest guys I ever met. And, uh, and he developed the system um, for his own uh, uh, to, to beat the bank in a casino. And uh, then we said, okay, we have, um, well, at that time, uh, each, uh, each of us had about 8,000 uh, 8, uh, left on the bank. 
from the student loan. And, and so we said, okay, we invest at least w one part of it. Uh, we invest and try to get and to make uh, 10 times out of it. And okay. uh, then, uh, yeah, then uh, two of us went to Dijon and, and, and Andreas' uh, plan uh, <laughs> <laughs> failed. Fa failed dramatically <laughs> and, and they came Dijon? back with zero money. So we why Dijon? Lost. Why not Switzerland? I, I think it was at that time it was no no really casinos in, ah, in Switzerland. Really? It was okay. not uh, yet allowed. Yeah, okay. it was so the you only went. place you could really <laughs> gamble. Oh, yeah. So you went there and then um, uh, how was it when you realized that this money was gone? Was we it definitely knew that we need to get some funding from friends and family or from the bank. And the bank uh, was very actually very positive uh, to our plans. And we at that time we then did a presentation with the first, you know, uh, tools that, uh, you know, we try to make graphs from how we would sell the computers and uh, how much money we would make. And it was the first, actually, presentation I made. And it was so uh, <laughs> convincing <laughs> uh, that we got the loan. So we got well, 100,000 Swiss francs. Just really, no, just, just to, to start. No business. security yeah. connected. I, I think it would, would be today, nowadays. Impossible. impossible, yeah. But you didn't share the casino story with them. No, at we, that moment. We, <laughs> you we kept didn't that share to your, that, yeah. to yourself. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you got this bank loan, and then um, Miracle started to develop. It grew. Um, it was actually quite a long time. You said like mid '80s you started, mm. and can you tell us a little bit how it grew and 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 what the major major milestones were during that that were during that time yeah we we started uh, 85 with the development of the of the software miracle um, and uh, it was basic the, basically the first version that we developed and it was a, a huge market success we were one of the uh, biggest software companies uh, among uh, others in switzerland and um, had uh, more than 1,500 installations in, in, in mid-sized companies. Um, and, um, you know, in the, uh, we grew the company to about 100 people. Uh, and uh, in, in um, the early 90s, uh, when Windows 3.0 came, and, and uh, actually a new graphical interface came, and we saw that the potential of the, the new uh, software development tools would enable us to to develop a completely new system that would be completely, um, yeah, completely new and, and had a, a completely other um, uh, focus in, in implementing such a software uh, in companies. Um, we saw that, that there was, would be an opportunity again to restart the company and mm -hmm. basically invest all of what we did uh, in the past at that time into the new software. Yeah. And that was a turning point uh, in the early 90s um, we could have sold the company at that time. Uh, could have made, who were potential uh, a lot of money. buyers? Yeah, of who course. Were, who were potential uh, buyers at th that there time? There were other software companies. We had talks with uh, some implementation partners, uh, big consulting partners as well. So there would have been a po possibility to sell the company, but uh, I think we were too young also at that mm -hmm. time. We were all, uh, you know. Early 30s? Uh, yeah. In the early 30s, or not only 30. Um, <laughs> Or not yet 30, and uh, so it was for us. It, I think it was always the entrepreneurial challenge to yeah. to restart it again and to 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 uh, to prove that the new technology and the new concept that we developed would be really uh, sh paradigm shifting yeah. in in the ERP world. So you were four founders. So there was uh, Peter Niederhauser, then Andreas, you already mentioned, and your brother was yes. also in the company. And somehow you realized there is something very special about Miracle. Like there, during the 90s, there was something taking place where, yeah, it was like a momentum that was generated. And can you tell us a little bit, like, how did that feel? Like, when you realized this is bigger than just Langenthal, this is bigger than just Switzerland, this is something which can be much more. We realized that we were on something real big. Uh, there was a technology that was enabling us to develop 
new things, new ways how to implement an ERP system, yeah. which was in the past brick and mortar, and now we had these objects and we could build the objects and the business um, processes. And on the other hand, there was the internet coming and, and you saw that, that this both uh, streams would, would really end up in a, in a tornado. And mm -hmm. that was the dream that we all had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and how did you come up with the idea of an IPO? Like for me as an entrepreneur, an IPO is like the last step you take, like uh, really that, that's the huge success. How did you come about? How did you even know that IPO would be an option and actually go to the stock market? Yeah, you know, uh, software development at that time uh, was, uh, was heavy, heavy technology. It was heavy resource loaded, which means you had to have, uh, we had uh, in the peak about 200 developers mm -hmm. um, that developed the software and, and, and it was heavy uh, in terms of uh, resource spending and investing. And that's why we needed the, the right funding. And at, at a certain time, uh, we had the venture capital already in. We had um, uh, top venture capital companies that wanted to invest. Uh, then we saw, OK, the next step is to, to go international to fund all these initiatives. Uh, we had uh, subsidiaries in Germany. We had in, in, uh, in the UK. We had in the US uh, even um, in Italy. So we had, uh, at the same time, uh, when we developed the, the, the company further, we had, of course, a huge demand of funding. Mm -hmm. And um, the funding on co in, in, in a conventional way was, was an option, and we had that option uh, through uh, investment banks who wanted to invest. Um, but the other option was to have an IPO and to support, actually, also the t tech uh, initiative in Switzerland with an IPO that would be very, um, you know, uh, we knew that this would be a, a boost in, in the Swiss market and uh, that would also uh, play back for us to be more credential uh, in, in, in the sales of our software in our market and yeah. internationally. Yeah, 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 got it. And then it was super, it got really, really crazy. So you went public and I think you doubled your value within couple of weeks, uh, you went up to um, a value of 1.3 uh, billion, so uh, a lot of money. How did that feel? Was that a lot of pressure or, or what happened during that really, really crazy times when a lot of companies then, not just happened to Miracle, it happened to a lot of companies, yeah. but how did that feel being in the driver's seat of this Swiss company which takes off like a rocket? Yeah, I uh, sometimes um, I ask myself if uh, this would be true, and, and uh, it was really it was uh, uh, it was completely crazy. I mean, we we went public and we did the IPO because we wanted to a fair valuation. At that time, when we went public, we thought that this valuation is a high valuation, but it was a fair valuation, mm -hmm. and we wanted to that money. Uh, that we got from, from the IPO to invest, to make uh, out of it, and to prove that we are um, a company that has this value. Mm -hmm. um, and what happened then, uh, you know, it, it, uh, six times the value that was fair for us when we sold our, our shares, well, you know, was suddenly people uh, asked us questions about, you know, the company and they valued the company in a way we, it was really absolutely crazy. It was a bubble. And it, it, it also built the pressure on the company and it, 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 it also built emotions uh, against the company because, um, you know, a lot of people meant uh, or, or thought that we would drive this, this, this value uh, on the stock market and we, we never did that. In, in, uh, we were against uh, this, this way of, uh, uh, of increase of values. And, and, and share prices. And um, it also drove a lot of uh, bad emotions and bad feelings against the company of customers that maybe weren't that satisfied because of some issues and mistakes in the, uh, in, in, in the software and, or, or some failures of, of implementation, blah, blah, blah. So um, I think at the end of the day, uh, it was really a, a, a a crazy ride which had no economic 
uh, in the mm -hmm. backing. Yeah. So there came two things together again. Like when you said that's how we got the momentum, there were two things like a product which was incomplete, failing a bit, two customers who then got the other customers on board to complain and to make a big noise against you, yep. PR noise to yep. you. And then on the other hand, you had an economic crisis coming in there with, uh, with um, uh, um, the stock market collapsing and everything going down and difficult exactly. times. So um, how fast, like there is a saying, what goes up must come down. How fast did you come down? And yeah, how it was, it was a complete crash. I mean, we, uh, out of this uh, announcement uh, of, of uh, also very close, actually, um, entrepreneurs of us uh, who, who then turned negative to us. Um, it, it had, it, it, the result was that we, we didn't sell any, any license uh, during maybe six months. And we had a huge crisis in, in terms of managing sales, managing the, the company, managing the employees uh, that were unsecure what is happening. And, and, and everybody tried hard, actually, to, to be good and, 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 and uh, market approved. And, um, and we had also, uh, at the end of the day, uh, the software, of course, uh, software is always incomplete, but, uh, but we had very, very satisfied uh, customers. Even, you know, I just heard uh, some years back that, that there are still customers using our, our technology and our software. So it's, it's not that the software itself was, you know, crashing. It was yeah. more the, the environment uh, that, that turned, uh, the positive spiral turned into a, uh, uh, into a negative roller coaster uh, run. Mm -hmm. And did you did you finally um, run out of money, or what? What happened? Like the moment you realized, okay, now it's like what was the complete crash when you? You know, we had uh, support, and we wanted to make a, a capital increase, and we had investors on board uh, that wanted to fund, and they saw also that uh, that we that we were getting back on track. We we had uh, we the, we sold licenses uh, licenses again and and so we we tried to recover and we actually recovered mm -hmm. and we I I did many road shows went to to new investors and and we had investors on hand but at the end of the day um, um, at that time our house bank didn't want to to do the the, the capital increase and this is a, is a huge thing if you're IPO. You, you need uh, to do that uh, officially and mm -hmm. open, and uh, they didn't want to do that. And, and on the other hand, they, they gave us a loan, and we had an option to a second tranche of this loan. And they couldn't commit to the second tranche. And, you know, we, we had 300 employees, um, uh, and we needed the money, and we had an, uh, uh, a limit. Um, uh, where we where we had to, to make the decision and um, yeah it was at that day when we had the board meeting and we told uh, the bank that it would be five o'clock and if they don't um, uh, commit by five o'clock for the second tranche then they, we would shut down the company and um, I think they they thought that we would uh, gamble be be gambling and bluffing but uh, but then we shut down. Yeah. At five o'clock, and then how did that feel like when you had to tell the people? Was it a very I sad was, day? Uh, certainly one of my toughest moments. Uh, you know, we had because we knew that it would be close and uh, that we had to restruct uh, uh, the, the company. Um, also, we we in, in invited all the people to Langenthal. We had almost uh, more than two hundred people in in our uh, headquarter, and uh, we then. Made, the per, uh, made it personal. So uh, uh, for me, it was clear that I would do that personally and, and uh, inform them about the shutdown of the company and that we would uh, try to bring them into new companies and, and um, to find jobs for them. And how is the relation? So if you have 300 people, I think you are still in touch with some of them. How is the oh, relation absolutely. with them now? Like 15. I think, uh, you know, uh, I, I occasionally meet people uh, from that time. I think for, for, for all of them, it was really a, an unbelievable time. That's uh, at least what I feel. Of course, potentially there are also people that have bad feelings mm -hmm. about that, uh, that failure. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it was really a cool time. You know, we, 
we rocked the, uh, on, in, in the middle of uh, the technology revolution, uh, we rocked a, a, a market and, and I think it was a very cool, uh, cool time. Of course, lots of work and a lot of trouble and, and, and but you know, I was really cool startup time. Looking back at that time, um, is there something you would do differently? Yeah, of course. What, like what comes to your mind first? Go international uh, once you have your own market and you own your own market. Um, certainly it's something that uh, we underestimated dramatically. Um, uh, going um, you know, international, especially to the US, uh, this took a lot of management attention. Uh, uh, and um, that was certainly something that, uh, that I would do completely different. Also, maybe in, in, the, in the way how we, we developed the company and funded the company, um, of course, there, 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 there are also things, um, you know, the IPO was maybe a bit too early. It was bringing us into a turmoil of, 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 of a tornado of, of the stock market itself. Now you could say uh, IPO would be okay, but timing, um, so certainly. And of course, many, many operational mistakes that I made and uh, that I knew, uh, you know, timing is, is important. Mm -hmm. um, especially if you, if you develop something really new, which is a paradigm shift in the market, then timing, uh, the right timing is, is very important. So maybe moving on from that miracle, thanks for sharing it. It's very a personal thing and I think a lot of Swiss people um, are afraid to become entrepreneurs because they are afraid of failing. But looking now at your story, what happened in the last 16 years after Miracle, I think it was super important that Miracle happened to make you an entrepreneur, also for Langenthal, for that this year happened. I think without Miracle, probably we would not sit here. Yeah. Um, and so uh, I think for us it is maybe interesting, how did you recover maybe personally after that happened? Like what did you do to actually get distance? I think it, it, for you it was super hard. So you were the CEO of that company. So you were the person everyone was blaming. There were people who yeah. invested in Miracle stocks from their bank accounts and thought it's super safe and they now gonna win and they lost. Um, and you were the person everyone was blaming. How did you handle this situation and what did you do to get to gain distance? Uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was very difficult. It was a very difficult time for me um, because, uh, of course, it was our baby and, uh, you know, uh, all of us, we were fighting for it, for it uh, you know, every second we, we worked uh, like, like, you know, hell. Um, and we wanted to save it and we wanted to recover. Um, and then the shutdown was like, you know, like uh, really a shutdown of also of me personally. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember well, uh, it was uh, uh, Daniel Borrell actually, who I always wanted to have on board uh, in our uh, board of directors, but he couldn't make it. And, and he called me up then and, and asked me to, to be part of a, of a workshop for, for students uh, of uh, APFL Lausanne mm -hmm. and to tell them the story about Miracle and my failure. I, I told him, I, I, I can't, uh, you know, it's, it's now some weeks and, uh, and uh, it's too, too early, but he insisted, insisted and, and I then went to that workshop and it was really like a relief because I could tell these young people who were really curious about, curious about uh, you know, the story about the, also the, uh, you know, what there was behind the scene, you know, what was on media was a lot of interpretation, misinterpretation of uh, what we really intended to do and what we did. And so we, I could explain myself, I could also let go a bit and uh, that was very, very important and I, I, uh, uh, I was always very, very thankful of uh, Daniel to really have this, uh, you know, initiative and, and, and to bring me out of that maybe also a bit negative circle that I mm -hmm. had because mm -hmm. Lanental is a small town and, yeah. and everyone you know, knows uh, you. everybody, you know, was blaming me uh, uh, for, for, for this failure and 
But on the other hand, I knew that I that you know that uh, that we tried our best, mm -hmm. and I I uh, also could say that uh, we never did something wrong. Yeah. Uh, of course, we, we made mistakes. Yes, uh, of course, and we all wanted to make a success out of Miracle and not uh, making a, um, a short money. Right. Right. Yeah. Did you take a break, like personally, or what came after Miracle? Like, did you did you go on a on a travel? Did you you are a runner? <laughs> did you run a lot, or how did you? Now did we you uh, all the founders went. Uh, we were all divers, um, and uh, we went on a safari two weeks um, all together. And I think it was very very important also that we. Uh, all the founders that they that we didn't blame uh, each other on, on failures or, yeah. or mistakes uh -huh. uh, that we made in each department. We we all were running uh, certain departments, and of course um, there were uh, some there was a tension in between also the founders, mm -hmm. but uh, that made it uh, really easy then also to to going forward to not really. Uh, yeah, have bad feelings uh, mm -hmm. among the founders. Yeah, and both are really close friends to you still. Peter is running Red Alpine, where you are uh, working with them a lot. You do uh, investments together. Um, Andreas was an important per person at Fashion Friends. Yes. Right? He was one yep. of the developers. And the fourth one was your brother. And then something also very dramatically or even more dramatically, I think that was interesting for us because you had like, on one hand, you had a company dying, you had a brother who had an accident, nearly dying. Are you open to share with us what happened there with your brother? And Yeah, he had a, a car accident in Italy and uh, his uh, girlfriend died at the accident and he had a a uh, very serious head injury and was in, uh, in, a, in a coma. And um, yeah, it was, uh, it was really difficult because he, he uh, ran his own company. Uh, this company was separate, uh, was, was, was a separation or a, a, a spin-off of, of, of Miracle. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, yeah, it was tough. And it, but it showed me also uh, that, uh, you know, Miracle was uh, just a story. I mean, it's it's at the end of the day, it was only business, and uh, I realized also what what really was important in life. Um, you know, we in the my early years, I invested completely in in miracle, and uh, I think this incident, uh, this accident, uh, um, showed me that uh, there is much bigger and more important things than. Mm -hmm just a company. Right, and his company at that point of time had 40 employees. So there was, was something which someone had to care of and you stepped up and said, I'm replacing my brother. Your brother is still in coma during that time, like yep. still is now. Uh, so he never came back and you took care of it. Like, why did you take care of it? Yeah, I mean, uh, my brother and I were <coughs> always uh, really close. Um, you know, we, we um, after, after Miracle, um, he, we shared a lot of, um, we had a lot of discussions. My brother was completely different in the way he does, did business than I do. Uh, we were also, from a from personal perspective, very different. Uh, but, um, but we had a, a really uh, common base uh, in, in, in also, uh, we, we shared the passion for technology. We, we shared the passion to build uh, enterprises. And, 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 and therefore, uh, we had a lot of discussions about, uh, his, about the future of his, his company. Uh, because he was in a very difficult situation, a challenge uh, in technology that took place in 2001. And uh, together with Peter Niederhauser, um, and I'm, I'm very thankful of his uh, support in, in, in that project, uh, mm -hmm. we then um, turned the company profitable and, and, uh, and sold it after, after five years then. So it was more like a, a, a kind of turnaround management you did there. You took over yep. in a very hard time with this uh, terrible accident of your brother then found a way, found a person and handed it over and that freed you up mm -hmm. to do something new again. Exactly. So you went back to uh, networks and uh, you somehow came into uh, to the StudiVZ uh, um, um, world, right? Yeah, um, I was always uh, investing in new companies uh, 
uh, I was always very fascinated already at, at um, you know, we had an idea at Miracle to share business objects uh, among the community mm -hmm. uh, of people that would use our software. And uh, this kind of sharing uh, social network, uh, this combination was appealing and, and was I was curious how, how to build something like that. And then the opportunity of StudiVZ came and um, Peter Niederhaus and I invested in, in StudiVZ and um, I got then the call uh, of the investors to whether we would be interested uh, or I would be interested to run actually the, the company because they had troubles with their CEO. So you went to Berlin? I went to Berlin and um, it was the early 2004 five. So the really starting point of uh, the Berlin uh, initiative, yeah. Yeah, so it was the next um, bubble building up, kind of, yeah. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't say uh, bubble because I, I think uh, it's, uh, you know, in, during this time, the, I think uh, the market developed enough now at that time to, to really uh, create a market, a mm -hmm. real market for real uh, business cases. Yeah, but, business but at that moment, honestly, you didn't know, like looking at no. Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg, so you were head on head again, like both dropped out of school. You were running the German Facebook, he was running the bigger Facebook, but at that time, I think they started 2004 Facebook, no? Yeah. Yeah, so you were really... We were actually the copycat, the yeah. copycat of Facebook, the yeah. early Facebook mm -hmm. uh, in, in, uh, in, in Germany and uh, we were very, very successful. The company yeah. grew, yeah, uh, unbelievable. Did, I mean, did, we, did Mark never call you and said, hey, uh, Peter, no. I'd like to buy your StudiVZ? <laughs> no, his business uh, development guys called, of course. And now they, it was actually an offer on the table to, um, to sell StudiVZ to Facebook. To yeah. Facebook. Okay, and why didn't you? Was the offer not good enough? Or was no, it the uh, original investors or the investors that uh, invested uh, uh, at the same time in, in StudiVZ, they didn't want uh, to, to sell to Facebook because it was, I think even for them at that time, was not really obvious how this would develop turn then, out, yeah. and turn out in the, in the, in, in, in the future. And so they decided to actually sell the company to Holtzbrink. For money, like probably money. Facebook cash. was share, share, shares cash. at that time. Yes, cash. yes. Yeah. Uh, Facebook they offered, didn't have any money. Um, offered shares. Yep. Yeah, and yep. so uh, they sold to Holtzbrink for a lot of money at that yep. time. Yeah, it was so. uh, unbelievable, it was uh, more, more than 90 million euro. Yeah, so that was also nice for you at that time. So, but you had to rethink what to do. For you, it was clear not to stay on with Holtzbrink. Yeah, I, I managed uh, the handover uh, to the new management team and I was kind of a mentor f to the management team for a certain period of time uh, and then I, I stepped out and it was clear that I, I wouldn't uh, run the company under, mm -hmm. under Hans Holtzbrink. Um, and for me, it was kind of also a starting point because we, I, I built also um, Xing in, in Switzerland and I realized with StudiVZ how uh, powerful uh, a social network is mm -hmm. and how uh, and we tried to create a business model around the social network. And uh, that's when uh, I had the opportunity to step in and to take uh, a model, a business model that will had kind of a, a, a community ID and the commerce, so the mon monetization of, of the community in itself, and it was the Vent Privé model, uh, mm -hmm. so the social shopping club, mm -hmm. and uh, that's when we started Fashion Friends. But actually, first you thought about to do it in Berlin before yes. you decided to come back to Switzerland. Why did you decide to come back here? I think it was basically because of uh, of my family, um, because I was uh, always in Berlin and I. I was, uh, you know, four days at least, or sometimes five days a week in Berlin, and I uh, didn't want to to travel and and be in Berlin without having the family with me. And uh, we then also discussed that um, uh, within the family whether they would be willing to to come to Berlin. And uh, but the family and my kids, they didn't want to move, and so I decided uh, then to build the next thing in, in Switzerland again. And that was around 2008? Yes. 
uh, I remember there was a crisis too, like in 2008. No, in fall there was a, was a, um, the the last time the stock market went down. I ah, believe yeah. it was 2008 ah, yeah. in fall. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. Did you yeah. start before or after, or did that affect you at all? Were you so um, crash resistant by that time that you said? I I, I, I never thought about that, uh, I, and I didn't care actually didn't because care. we we were so convinced about the model, and that we could f actually build it. Uh, we were really really uh, uh, you know. Uh, we had everything, we, you know, we had, um, I was together with uh, Oliver Jung and uh, Klaus Hommels mm -hmm. and we had, you know, funding, we had, we took Tamedia on board mm -hmm. at the beginning and um, so we, we had really, I think we had everything to make it a success. It was part or it was actually a question of execution rather than, you know, funding or, or mm -hmm. other other questions. Mm -hmm. But being honest, uh, taking someone like Tamedia that early on into the boat, that might be difficult too. Yes, uh, of course. I, I mean, it was, uh, it was uh, not, not easy. We had to convince them, of course. Um, but I think for, for, for them it was kind of um, game money to see what, what is going on in, in the e-commerce and how could e-commerce also connect to, to media. Mm -hmm. and um, or transaction business versus classified business and um, yeah therefore we were at the right time uh, at the right place so they invested and and we could start mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and then building fashion friends um, how did uh, how did fashion friends like come about to be that important and then actually realizing that it's not that important. Like it also went like up and probably it was the push maybe of Tamedia, but then in the end, it still got really, really difficult. Like it was mm. not that tremendous success, success story you probably envisioned. How did that like take place? I think, uh, you know, Fashion Friends had all the ingredients to be really the, the market leader. Um, uh, we had a world-class uh, team on board. Um, we we built the company, uh, really, you know, grow grow the company uh, very fast, and were very successful in the market. Uh, but on the other hand, um, you know, you had uh, a partner on board which was uh, not always supporting our strategy of growth. And this is maybe also uh, a disadvantage of Switzerland mm -hmm. that 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 you know um, growth and and growth for everything uh, and to invest in growth everything is not uh, let's say something that has to do with co to conventional business um, you you have to be willing to gamble and to say yes we do and. Yes, we invest. And this is uh, something that a, a corporate culture like Tamedia uh, doesn't implement. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's not it's in their DNA to take that much absolutely, risk. It's in uh, your DNA, but absolutely, not in theirs. Absolutely. And that maybe was a little bit the culture clash you had. There. Absolutely. And, and you, it was you the can't most even difficult. Blame, you can't even blame them for them. It's like in no, no, looking back not. at it, it's, it's kind of obvious. You just have to think about do you take it in or do you leave it out? And you exactly. decided to take it, it in. There was the big advantage to have the reach and uh, the, uh, you know, that we could use their reach for us. Uh, um, and on the other hand, there was the big disadvantage that at the end of the day, uh, when it came to really make conclusions, uh, do we want now really growth um, or do we want uh, a sustainable no. business on a, a very limited level? Um, they didn't took any decision. And that was uh, also the, the, the time when, when I realized that uh, that wouldn't be the success that I wanted. Mm -hmm. So you left again? I left the company, I, I looked for, we had a huge project at that time to actually combine uh, the e-commerce activities of Ringier and Tamedia. And uh, then Tamedia took the decision not to make that deal. And uh, that was the time when I, for me, was uh, clear that uh, I was the wrong person mm -hmm. to be in such a culture and corporate structure to run this company. So something which, uh, um, for me, is a thing which is really connected to uh, Peter Schuppach is um, that you are 
doing something and the moment you feel it doesn't fit your person, it doesn't fit your skills, you are moving on. And in Switzerland, that's something moving on. That's not our talent. Can you, can you explain a little bit what happens in the moment you are realizing that you have to move on? And how do you put the energy in really say, OK, now I'm doing this? Especially for the young people like out there learning maybe to say, I'm riding a dead horse here. I have to move on. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's very important um, also for, for me personally uh, uh, to not waste my time in a, in a situation where I'm not satisfied or I have no impact. Um, I think, uh, you know, um, it was a tough time at Miracle at the end when I realized that uh, my impact at the end was almost zero, that I, I, I that my time and my energy that I invested in, in, in Miracle was not really um, moving something. And um, I think it was uh, uh, this tough and hard time that uh, showed me that, you know, that there are, um, there are moments in, in life where you have to make a decision which is, is tough maybe. And um, especially uh, in startups, I think, uh, and I see that also as an investor in lots of startups, that most of the time um, uh, entrepreneurs and, and, and founders are uh, very um, stubborn and, and very, uh, they want to hold uh, to what they do. And I think it's, it's letting go is, and move on to, to another position or in, into another company is like something like changing um, your your way of working and 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 asking yourself, uh, am I the right person in, in, in that position? And I think it has to do with self reflection. And I do that, I don't do that in a, in a way that I um, do that with yoga or some <laughs> some some esoteric but, things. But is there uh, any it's, it's more, No, it's, it's there I think it's a feeling that I have inside which tells me uh, it's it's. It's time, you, you have to, to change something. Mm -hmm. But I'm not giving in. When does that happen? Does that ha you are a runner. Does that happen when you are running? Or does it happen when you are showering in the morning? Or when does that happen that you get this feeling? Like yeah, I think it's, 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 a, it's a puzzle. It's like running a marathon. Uh, in a marathon, you, you, you have ups and downs constantly. You know, you have bad downs where you don't think that you make it mm. to, the, to, the, to the finish line. And, but then you recover. But I had also uh, you know, an incident in, in the New York Marathon where I had to say, whoa, no, um, I have to stop. And uh, I think it's, it's, a, uh, it's a puzzle of feelings, a puzzle of uh, realizing what is happening in the company, the, the facts, and figures and your feeling and the emotions that you have with the company. And it doesn't mean that I, uh, for example, that I, uh, um, that I draw completely out of a company. I was part of Fashion Friends for the, for the other next three years after I stepped out. Mm -hmm. And I tried to help the company. I tried to uh, help them to recover and to, to still be successful. So, I think it's it's more. Um, I, I've, maybe I saw also. I'm, I'm confident that that if I don't bring an impact, that I still remain Peter Schüpbach. Also, mm -hmm. if I'm not anymore in that position as a CEO. Right, right. Yeah, I think that's so super important for all the young Swiss entrepreneurs. And um, yeah, maybe it's all about honesty. Like you are a very yeah. honest person, yeah. and you are not honest yeah. to me. You're honest to yourself. Um, uh, something I really, really don't uh, like to miss is uh, your family life. Peter Niederhauser, who is also a person I'm connected to, and um, when I'm chatting with him about you, um, he says he really admires you for your family life. We already heard that you didn't move to Berlin because your family decided to be here. Um, what do you think, like building a company, having kids, like your first kids were born during that crazy miracle time? Yeah. How did you put, how did you get that all? together and you're still married, you're still in a good relationship with your kids, with your wife. How did you manage all that? 
Is there any advice you can give us younger entrepreneurs? <laughs> my kids are one and three. My wife is somehow happy with me. How can I manage that? Oh, it's a, I think it's, a, it's, it's, it's my wife, which uh, is an entrepreneur uh, herself. And uh, uh, is, by the way, uh, building Swiss commerce uh, to what it is. She's running the, all the logistics processes and the logistics teams. And she's very much also uh, was always supporting me. And um, I always knew that, um, you know, we had also tough times uh, during this miracle. Um, and, uh, you know, this was a tough, tough time also in our relationship. But she always supported me. And, and you know, I, I also realized maybe also to, through the accident of my, my brother that uh, the life uh, beside of our uh, emotional <laughs> and crazy startup life is, yeah. is as, as important, is more important. And uh, I, I try to spend time together with uh, my family. It's, you know, it's always tough. It's not easy, uh, especially if you run a company like that and you're always under pressure. You're always, but I, I try to really um, save time and, and be um, hard in, in, in the way how I divide my private life and my business life. And if, I, if I'm at home, I, I, it's really, it's a cut. It's, you it's, are at uh, home. Yeah, I am at home. And I, I, there might be um, crazy exceptions, but, but usually I really care about uh, my family and, and uh, try to spend really quality time with my family. And, the good thing, certainly, in my relationship with my wife is that uh, you know we we share a lot of common things together. Uh, we do same sports. We we have same interests. Uh, that helps a lot. Yeah. Uh, she's she's part of uh, my business life as well, and I'm part of her business life. And uh, so we we share at least a lot of time together. Also, although we don't work really close together, mm -hmm. but, but it's uh, it's I think it's something uh, of. Uh, supporting each other. Also, if she has uh, issues, I, ha I try to help and support her as mm -hmm. well. There is a deep understanding, vice versa, yep. for each other yep. and the problems. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So maybe coming to an end, I think you are such a great Swiss role model, like with all the ups and downs, with the roller coaster, I think um, someone calls it a serial entrepreneur in the Silicon Valley, in Langenthal, we probably call it different. I think it doesn't matter what tag we put on that, but I think it's so important that we have these role models and I'm so happy that you are open to share with the people. If there are young people out there who say, hey, Peter Schuckbach might be um, a business angel to my company or Peter Schuckbach could give me a certain advice, what's the easiest way to get in touch with you and you're a busy person, like how should you how should you? How, how should we connect with you? You find me on Facebook. I'm on Xing, on LinkedIn. I'm uh, or write me an email at peter.schubach at uh, gmail.com, and I uh, encourage everyone uh, out there. Uh, you know, it's it's such a um, it's such a uh, unbelievable time to start a business. I mean, we have today uh, technology available where you can with almost no funding, uh, with your own energy, you can start a business, you can, you can change the world with today's uh, uh, technologies. And I, I, I would hope that uh, much more Swiss uh, start their own business and, and, and try to capture the world and be successful. And although it, they might fail, it's, it's, it's part of the game. It's part of the game and it, it belongs to, uh, to entrepreneurs um, that there is a risk that you fail. But I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you fall down, you can stand up and run again. As we saw impressively in your case. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us and uh, I hope to uh, stay in touch with you and I wish you all the best. Thank Thanks, you very Peter. much. Thanks. Mm -hmm.